If you just built your first ever PC or you bought a pre-built and you have no prior computer knowledge, listen up because you might be leaving valuable free performance on the table and you didn't even know it. Of course, I'm talking about XMP. Now hold up, if you already know what that is, stick around anyways, because you might learn something new. XMP, which stands for Extreme Memory Profile, or DOCP, which stands for Direct Overclock Profile, which is what AMD used to call it, but now they pretty much both call it XMP anyways. Uh, XMP was coined by Intel and AMD didn't want to pay them royalties. Eh, it doesn't matter. This allows you to automatically set RAM data rates over and above the base level. Technically, it's an overclock, which is why companies like NZXT don't enable it from the factory. That and it costs them more time, which in turn costs them more money. You enable this feature in your motherboard's BIOS. And if you don't know what that is, fear not, I'm about to show you today. But first, check out the performance increase you're missing out on by not enabling XMP. The test setup I used is an i9-10850K, the ASUS ROG Strix Z490 motherboard, Corsair's H115i Pro liquid cooler, and an EVGA RTX 2080 Ti XC Gaming. The RAM that I used is a 16 gigabyte kit of G-Skills Trident Z in two 8 gig sticks with an XMP setting of 3200 megahertz, CAS latency 16, 18, 18, 38. I tested on two different resolutions across four different games and I enabled XMP and then I let it run at stock settings. These are the results. These tests were all ran at max settings. Here's the 1080p results. For Forza Horizon 5, I got 94.2 FPS with the 3200 megahertz enabled and 82.6 without XMP. Apex Legends was a little bit closer in results. I got 217 with XMP and 215.7 out of box settings. Hitman 3 was 119 versus 97.4 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider was 150.8 versus 130. So you can see right away, as soon as you enable those XMP settings and you allow your RAM to run at the advertised speeds, you get a major performance bump. I mean, besides Apex Legends, everything got between a 10 and 20 FPS increase. Let's take a look at 1440p. Max settings on 1440p in Forza Horizon 5 saw 80.5 for the XMP settings and 68.7 for the out-of-box settings. Apex Legends saw a little bit more of an increase in the 1440p category at 176.2 versus 168. Hitman 3 was 109.7 versus 93.1, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider shrunk down a little bit at 119.7 versus 114.5. Even at 1440p, the increase is really drastic when you enable those XMP settings. So you wanna make sure that if your RAM does have a higher clock speed than what you're getting, you wanna enable that. Now you're probably wondering, how do I enable XMP and gain this free performance boost? Well, I'm gonna explain it right here using my own PC. It's very simple and it only takes a couple minutes. You start with your computer completely turned off. You power it on and as soon as you push the power button, you begin mashing the delete key. Sometimes it's F2, but most of the times it's delete. This will take you into your motherboard's BIOS, which is your computer's pre-boot menu. All these menus look different depending on which motherboard manufacturer you end up going with. Make sure you're in the easy menu. Sometimes they won't just load into this and you'll need to hit something like F7 to show it. The cool thing about the newer motherboard BIOS is now you can use a mouse and keyboard. Back when I first started doing this, the use of a mouse was not enabled in the BIOS. All you do when you're in this menu is go to your memory and look for your XMP settings. Mine is just an easy button up here that says on and off. You're gonna turn your XMP on or enable profile one. Once that's done, you just hit F10, which saves all changes made. Then you'll select yes, and it's gonna boot right into Windows. To verify you did everything correctly, all you have to do is hold Control, Shift, and Escape. This will bring up your task manager. You might need to hit the more details button at the bottom there, and then that opens it up and shows all your apps and everything you have running on the computer at the time. Bring your mouse up to the top and you'll see the performance tab Click that tab, it's gonna show you your CPU, your memory, disk usage, all that stuff. Select memory on the left-hand side here, and then you're gonna go down to the bottom. You may need to expand this window if it's too small for you so that you can see your speed. It's gonna show a bunch of your memory information, like how much is in use, how much is committed. 
you can see speed right here. Mine shows 3,200 megahertz speed. If yours doesn't show what your advertised speed is, say it shows 2133 or 2400 megahertz, that means you don't have XMP enabled. For mine, you can see I'm running at 3200 megahertz. I've got the free performance boost unlocked. Let's talk about motherboard support for a second. The motherboard must support RAM overclocking. So if you have any Ryzen CPUs, all of those Ryzen motherboards supported RAM overclocking since the first gen Ryzen's. Now, Intel is where it gets a little tricky. Intel only used to allow their Z-series motherboards to overclock both the CPU and the memory, but they've recently started to support overclocking of the memory in the B-series and H-series motherboards, starting with 11th gen CPUs. Make sure to check your motherboard manufacturer's website for the RAM compatibility listing. You can find this under their support tab, then look for compatibility and either CPU or memory is usually an option. You'll need the model number from your memory kit and how many sticks you'll be using to see if the company has validated it. It may work anyways, but this is the company guaranteeing it, so just make sure you do your homework before purchasing. Now, if you purchased a pre-built, this really won't be an issue because most of the pre-built companies, I'm pretty sure all of them, check for compatibility before sending out the computer. This was just a little PSA from Danny's Tech Channel. I actually came up with the idea for this video completely by accident. I was doing some testing on the RTX 3070 uh, review that I did a couple weeks ago, and the 2080 Ti was ran up against the 3070 in case you didn't watch that video. Well, when I was doing my 2080 Ti benchmark numbers, the results were really low. I mean, as you saw when I didn't have XMP enabled, they weren't very good. When I switched off the power supply and went to unplug and swap my graphics cards, the motherboard had reset the BIOS. Maybe my BIOS battery is dead or something, I don't know, but I had to re-enable XMP settings on the motherboard in order to be able to do my testing or continue my testing with the 2080 Ti. This, however, gave me content to produce and allowed me to educate you to make sure you're getting the best FPS possible on your PC at home. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe down below for more PC-related content. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel, and I'll see you in the next one.